Folks, look at that rod tip right there. It's got a little weight on it, and my kayak's kind of spun around. I think we got a flathead right here. Let's pick up on him. Yeah, buddy. I think we got us a flathead on here. This will be the first one, and well, since the spawn started. I don't think I've got one since May. It's been a long time. I just really struggle during those months of June, early July, when they're on the beds. I struggle to find any any flatheads at all. I occasionally luck into one. I'm pretty sure we got us one here right now. Today's July. I think today's the 27th. So spawn should be wrapped up completely here in East Tennessee. I think all the all the fish should be off the beds by now. We can get back to business. If you can just find them and be on the water when they're active. Blues and flatheads. Today I'm out here fishing a point. I'm actually kind of off the end of it here on down into the main channel. I'm anchored down like 58 feet here. I've got my bait suspended right off the bottom. But there's a point over here beside me that comes up. We've had some fish feeding up here. I've seen some white bass here at first light. It's about, that's a little before 7 a.m. right now. I got out here about 6.30. Excited to get a look at this fish. I don't know how big he's going to be. It's hard to tell with these flatheads. The dang things fight so hard. <laughs> this one ate a piece of skipjack. Old Catfish Dave, another YouTuber most of you know. He's a friend of mine. He lives here in East Tennessee too. Uh, he got on some skipjack the other day and invited me out in his boat. We went out there and tore him up. And uh, he gave me his freezers out, so he gave me everything he caught other than what he needed for his trip, his catfishing trip. So I've got a cooler full here of fresh skips and was able to put a few more back in the freezer too. So Catfish Dave, he don't watch my videos, but if he does or if you watch his and comment on his videos, tell him I shouted him out here and said thanks again for helping me out with bait. We are putting it to use right here. I'm taking my time, folks. You see them bubbles coming up? That's what you want to see. When you're fishing this deep, again, I'm in 58 feet here. You want to take your time with these fish. Let them decompress on the way up. That'll make sure they swim off in good condition. Yep. That's a flathead, folks. Fish number one's a flatty. Good to see them again. All right, folks, let's bring that thing in, man. It's nice to see these flatheads again. Very nice to see them again. Get him unhooked there. That one ate a skipjack body section. Didn't film myself getting baited up when I got out here this morning because it was still kind of dark. I didn't want to set my light up just to have it for a few minutes. This one's got some kind of weird bump on the side of him, it's like a, like a knot or something there, some kind of infection. They fought hard though, didn't he? That thing was fighting this morning. <laughs> All right, one last look at him there. Let's let him go. Go home, Mr. Flatty. He's out of here. All right, folks. Well, let's put us another piece of that skipjack that old Catfish Dave hooked me up with. We'll put that on the hook there and drop it back down. I've got three rods out here today. Uh-oh. The camera's still going because that rod just got hit. I can't tell if that's another. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got it. He's got it, buddy. I couldn't tell if it was a dink messing with it or if it was a better fish that had it and was getting ready to take off. Heck, yeah. Yeah. Well, this one here ate a body section too. I was saying I got three rods out here today. My back rod here has a headpiece and I had two body sections on these front rods. 
This fish here, I don't believe, is going to be quite as big as that flathead. And them rods go down. You see them rod tips get a little, oh, now he's going to pull now. Them rod tips start going down, you just don't know what's on the other end of it. That's a part of the excitement of doing this. It could be a five pounder, 10 pounder, or maybe a hundred pounder one of these days. My day may come, you never know. Oh, my bubble's coming up here. Uh oh, that rod got, that rod got tapped. Something's after that headpiece, folks. I'm gonna deal with the one in my hand here till that one takes off. My line, though, you can see it's it's swam outward there a little bit. Something's got it. That's a blue cat there. We got us a blue on this rod. I'm gonna reel down on this one with the headpiece over here. Let me set this one back a second. Because you can see my line is going that way. So we're just gonna reel down on him. Yep, yep, he's on there. We doubled up here. This one here, we gotta get some baits back in the water, folks. We got some fish moving through. You see that sun just peeked up over the tree line there. We got some active fish on here and I ain't got a, I ain't got a bait down there right now. This one's just gonna be a baby. That one there, just a little thing. We're gonna get our headpiece back though. That's exciting. Land this one first, so we get her, we get her bait back. We'll go ahead and drop it back down. Oh, oh! Well, there he went. He popped off the hook. That's perfect. Bait still hooked good. A little quick release on that. One. So let's drop this bait back down. We'll get it back down in the water. See if we can hook another one of these fish that have come through this area here. And then we'll land this one we got on the front rod. Yeah. Well, that sun's blinding me, folks. I'm looking right into it there, to look into that camera. Yeah, a little fun size blue and a fun size flathead to start the morning off. Plus that little dink there that we, that we lost right here beside the kayak. All right, man. Well, let's let him go. Now let's get baited up again. I'm gonna pull out one of these skipjack. Like I was saying, Catfish Dave hooked me up, man. Well, it's good to have friends that are good at skipjack fishing. <laughs> Cause I definitely ain't as good at skipjack fishing as I am at some other types of fish. So let's get these baits on there. Okay, there's just a piece of skipjack on that one, body section. We'll drop it down again. I'm just going to raise it up off the bottom a couple feet. And some of you are probably wondering why I'm not in my new kayak. I made a little Facebook post, a little video there the other day, showing off my how I got my rod holders mounted on it. I was talking about how I was going to go out the next day, put them to the test. Well, unfortunately, I had a malfunction again. Uh, the motor about three hours into my first trip. I filmed that video, my first trip in that new kayak, wrapped up on it, and I was on my way back to the launch, and I thought, you know, I'm gonna stop fish one more area, just do some me time fishing, you know. Let me get this other bait on here. Some scales off. There's that bait there, a little piece of skipjack. Uh, but I stopped off, do some me fishing, and I was in spotlight mode on that thing. And the motor just went crazy on me. Absolutely crazy. Just shot off full speed out of nowhere. So I turned the motor off real fast. Uh, you know, tried to turn it off, turn it back on, turn the remote off, turn it back on. Could not get the GPS to um, acquire signal anymore after that. And so I thought, well, maybe I was just in a bad area. So I went out the next day, hit a different body of water. Same story. Couldn't get the GPS to hold a signal. 
So I called her customer service department. The girl was real nice on there. She put me through to somebody there with Minn Kota. And they walked me through a series of checks on this kayak, try to figure out what was causing the problem. And we thought I had a bad relay. When I connected the motor to the battery itself, uh, the, the GPS come on and it worked properly. So we thought we just had a bad relay. That, that There's a relay there that connects the motor and the kill switch. So we just thought it had went out. And so uh, I took the kayak back to the lake there, tried it out for about 10 minutes. Everything worked perfectly if we bypassed that relay. So I'm thinking, okay, no problem. I can work around this. So I took it out to the lake or took it out to the river after I got my rod holders mounted ready to really put this thing to the test. I apologize that sun is blind to me. But I get out there, GPS acquires signal, works for about five minutes, and then it craps out on me again. So that's technology, folks. It's just uh, one of those things. It's awesome when it works. It really helps you out. But when it don't, it's a pain in the butt. Rod right there. Something wants that bait. Can he? I think he's got it, folks. I wasn't sure if he was going to hook up with it or not, but I'm pretty sure he's got it. Yeah, he does. Sometimes when they eat that bait and they come up in the water with it, you don't always get to hook up. And these circle hooks, you know, you need pressure for them to set that hook. When they normally when they eat the bait and start to go off with it, there. That's what sets the hook on them. So when they come up with it, you either got to reel down on them or hope for the best. And this one here ended up getting it. Oh, there goes that front rod too. Let's pick up on it. Yeah, man. Let's get this one. We'll leave that little one over our set in a second. Well, the action's been on the body pieces so far. We got that one dink on the headpiece everything else has been on the body so far i don't mind i'll feed them whatever they want today i'm just happy to be out here getting a fish another line over here and that headpiece is moving i think this fish may have gotten in that line possibly i don't think it's another fish on there could be wrong but we're going we're going to deal with this in here first and just see if we pull him up he's got two lines we'll know he's the culprit won't we <laughs> yeah he just got in my other line there swam through it all right all right let's get this other one over here first well this one here acts a fool We'll let him tire that energy out. We don't want to bring him in the kayak acting like that. Let's get this. He ought to be calmed down. All right, there's that first one. A little dink blue. Let's grab this one now. This one here. Eh, he's about the same size, probably. All right, and there's that one. Again, about the same size. Could have been twins down there. There's that piece there. Got all them guts there hanging out of it. All that, put all that scent down there in the water. Don't have any current out here this morning. TVA's not generating. So what I'm counting on is just fish working their way either up or down the main channel ledge here and hopefully going to work their way up onto this point or back into this creek over here. And when they do, they're going to come right through my bait. So I'm kind of sitting in one of those places where I'm just hoping active fish are going to move through my bait since I don't have that current out here to help me out and get my scent going downstream and allow them to really lock in on it from a long distance away and come get it. So, so far so good today. Look at this headpiece right here. Something ate it. Something ate that head. Yep. Man, he went under the kayak too. He's going that way. So I'll we'll end up in that other line over there if I ain't careful. Ain't nothing I can do about it though when they go that way. Yeah, buddy. 
Well, the headpiece finally getting a little bit more action here. It's been all, all body sections getting the take down so far other than that one dink, so. I still like to have a headpiece on at all times. That's just a, to me, that's just a big fish bait. I've caught so many big fish on them headpieces through the years. I've got an extraordinary amount of confidence in it at all times. Another blue right there. The old Billy Blue Cat. Let's take a look at that. You know, that headpiece is still in really good condition. I mean, that's the second fish on it, but you can still see there. It's got the meat on it. It's still pink in there. So we're going to drop it back down here in just a second. Once we let this fella go. That's another dink right there, another small one, but it's good to get action out here today. Lord knows I've had a... Oh, splash me on the way out. I was going to say, Lord knows I've had a lot of catfishing trips over the last couple months. It has been limited action. So, yeah, you can see they've they've tore that thing to shreds, man. They've ate the gut pocket out of it. It's still got some meat on there, but I'm going to go ahead and replace it. And I'm going to put that other headpiece on. We're just going to put three head baits on. All right, third and final headpiece. All three rods now got heads on them. Let's see if that don't improve our quality. Here goes that rod. Oh yeah. He's hooked up. He's hooked up. It's on one of them head baits. Didn't take long down there. They've been all over it this morning. I've just been right place I suppose get lucky once in a while folks <laughs> a little blind squirrel finding a nut and it's gonna pull buddy he's gonna take some drag now in fact I'm gonna back off at this smidge yeah man I think this one here is gonna be a little better fish that's exactly what I was hoping to do by putting them head baits down there since them small fish was down there just tearing up them and them body pieces when you get big fish moving through you got to have baits in the water and if i'm constantly reeling in them smalls or having my baits just shredded up down there like that one i showed you in there on camera it's not very it's not very tempting to the to the big fish if you got a bait like that so for whatever reason, them small fish just haven't been on the head pieces today. So if they'll leave them alone, when the big fish come through, I'll have a bait down there in perfect condition. That's a long-winded story to say that. It's still early, and I'm tired. I love being out here early mornings, but I ain't never going to be a morning person. <laughs> Yeah, that's a better fish right there. It's going to be the biggest one of the morning, I believe. It's going to be the best one of the morning. That's a good blue cat. See if I can get him up here. Yeah, man. That is a good blue cat. That is what I was hoping to accomplish. Let's switch all them baits up. Now, okay, now you come on in here and quit acting like that, yo thing. Woo, that's a good fish right there, man. That is a good fish. Get that bait out of there, get that hook out. It's nice, we're going, we got one on that rod right there too, look at that. Look at that one, man, he's stripping drag. Let me just, God, I'm gonna set that fish down just a second. And we're gonna pick up on this one, man. This one right here, I'm wondering if this ain't a striper. He made that hard run, and he's come right back at me here, full speed. We'll see when we get him up here. I could be wrong, but... I don't know what this is. Let's see. No, folks, that's just another good blue cat right there. 
That's another good blue cat. Heck yeah, man. All right. Well, he ain't done, man. We got him up quick, cause he, he shot off that way full speed and he come right back at me and up in the water column full speed. I'm gonna set him back in the rod holder. We got this one here on the floor. He's gonna go crazy on us if we don't get rid of him. Woo! Is that right there, folks? That's why you're gonna need to have your rod holders reinforced on there. So that they can stand up. That kind of torque right there. We're gonna, oh, we gotta get rid of this fish. He's wound up. We're gonna put that bait back down there. It's still in good shape. Let's hold him up. Folks, that right there is a long fish. Now, I'm guessing this is probably a male. Uh, he's about to flop on me. Oh, 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 oh. I can feel the energy brewing in him. <laughs> Let's try to hold him up one more time. As I was saying, I think this is probably a male fish just because he's so skinny. I think he's probably been on the nest and it takes them a while to get their weight back on once they get all get done with the spawn so this one give it another month or so and he'll be filled out and that'll be a really good fish because oh goodness heck with him buddy he's ready to get out of here he's full of piss and vinegar this morning goodness man he's wound up let's land this one now maybe he'll be more cooperative <laughs> That in there was trying to put a whooping on me, wasn't he? Oh no. This one here got back there in my anchor rope while I was fiddling with that other one. Oh goodness. goodness folks, we gotta bring the whole damn anchor in, I guess. That thing, while I was fooling with that other one, did laps around my anchor rope there. I'm gonna try to get this hook at. I got all this pressure on it here because where it's... I hate to have to pull in my whole dang anchor. There, goodness gracious, man. Whew. He just did laps around my dang anchor rope down there, man. That's one of the things I was so excited about getting a new kayak. With it having a spot lock, I wasn't going to have to deal with no damn anchor or anchor rope anymore. So I wasn't going to have that happen while I'd be out here suspend fishing. But hopefully it'll work out if they ever get the new motor to me. There's that one. He's a little bit shorter than the last fish, but it's thicker. He's got some more weight to him. It was a good time, wasn't he? <laughs> there goes that other front rod up there. Let me see if I can get that camera showing. Look at that. It's got weight on it. Let's let him go. We're going to pick up on this one now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's pick up on this one now. Well, we own some fish right here, ain't we? We are on some fish. I think this one might be in my anchor rope too because I moved my, I had to slide my anchor trolley up to get that other fish. He is, he's in it. Dang, man. Yeah. I'll be looking forward to getting a that other kayak functioned again, that's for sure. I love the hull of this kayak, but I hate I hate having that dang anchor rope, especially when you suspend fishing. When you suspend fishing and you ain't got no current, that anchor rope's just down there. You basically gotta keep it right there under you. This one come out of my anchor, thank goodness. Yeah, that didn't come out of the anchor, so okay. I'm gonna set him back. I'm gonna drop this bait down from the first fish. We're gonna get it repositioned here, get it rehooked. It's still in really good shape. Well, let's send it down. At least get another bait in the water in case there's some more big fish moving through. I don't have anything down there right now. We'll do this. I'm gonna get that line unwrapped from my anchor rope, get another bait on there, and then we'll land this other fish up front here finally. Here's that one. That's the smallest of those three that come along. Again, that bait still in good condition. So we're just gonna send it right back down. 
hopefully some more big fish are still there or moving through. It's been a good morning out here, y'all. It's been a real good morning. It's been the best trip I've had in a long time. I've missed trips like this. <laughs> Okay, folks, I put my other camera up. I'm gonna leave that front camera going just in case I hook into another whopper before I stop fishing today. But otherwise, we'll call this the end of the video because I've just caught so many fish out here this morning. This video is gonna run too long as it is. But this is the kind of day that I have been waiting on for the last couple months since the spawn started. A day where you get good quality of fish and some quantity of fish too. It's been action packed out here this morning and I've had a dang good time. So. Big thanks to Catfish Day for hooking me up with the skipjack. Having fresh bait, especially fresh skipjack out here, it makes a world of difference and you saw it out here in action today. So big thank you to Catfish Day. I know a lot of you all tuned into this video hoping to see me have my first catfishing trip in the new kayak and believe me, I was ready to do the first catfishing trip in that kayak too. But unfortunately, we're all just gonna have to wait until I can get that motor fixed or replaced or whatever it is they end up doing with. I think they're going to replace it, but again, I don't know how long that's going to take for that to, for them to get that to me. So whenever they do, we'll get out here and test it out. But until then, we'll keep using this one and hopefully keep having some days like I've had out here this morning. But I'm going to uh, kick back here, relax, and hopefully reel in some more fish. So if you see a bonus fish after this, I got another whopper. If you don't see anything after this, well, I either didn't catch any more fish or only got some small ones. So anyway, if this is the end, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.